<laughs> Are we having a Verizon commercial? <laughs> Amen. I was telling the sound man back there, a lot of churches buy sound equipment because I guess it's in the how to have a church manual or something, and uh, they don't have a clue how to work them. <laughs> Amen. I spend half my time, you know, trying to figure out, you know, whether it's on or not, and people wave flags, and, and like you couldn't hear me without it, right? Amen. It's good to be saved. That's the understatement of the evening. Amen. And uh, it's a blessing to be back here again. On the way here uh, out of Virginia, last week I got to go over to uh, my mother-in-law's birthday party over by Cleveland, and uh, she turned 90. Amen. And she prays for me every day. <laughs> Amen. If you pray for us at all, thank you very much. But boy, I tell you what, there's a handful of people that tell me they pray for us every day. And what a thing that is. Amen. And, uh, but Friday, they were getting ready for this big party. And, and about 20, 25 miles from where my wife and all her many sisters were working, uh, decorating and everything, getting everything ready, uh, there was a clubhouse of, of one of the motorcycle gangs that I started when I was lost. And I just told my wife I was going to go for a drive. It was Friday night. And you know what's going on out there on Friday night. So I drove along the lake and I watched uh, God's son setting in the Lake Erie. And, and I've got an old CD like one of the ones that are available here. Just good old clean Christian music. Stuff that gets your heart moving. Not your hips. You know what I'm saying? I mean, get your heart moving. And, and I'm looking at the glory of God and his creation and and listening to the music, and it's ministering to my heart, and I drive over to this little town, and, and I've been over there in many, many years now, I've been saved 15 years, and, but I found it, and I pulled up in front of that place, down a little bit, you know, and I was hoping to see it gone, or I was hoping to see it decrepit, and I, I, was, I was disappointed, it looked like they were doing pretty good. They'd put new siding up, and trying to, but I pulled up in front of that thing, and on Friday night, there's a lot of cars out front, eight or nine. And I crept forward in our car, and I got that music playing, and there's a bunch of Harley choppers in the back, and I can hear the music coming out. And I got this song playing, some youth choir is what it was. And I sat there, and I thought for 15 years, I spent my Friday nights in a place just like that. All over the country, not just that one. And I thought I was living. And this world lives their whole week and saves up and looks forward to that weekend. Go in there and get drunk and get high. And, and that's the way I was when God saved me. And I thought to myself, what am I doing here? 20 miles from here, there's a 90-year-old Christian lady... Hey man, and some saved family, and, and I drove on back over there, and I thank my God that I found out what living was. Amen. And if that wasn't enough, I got to come here, be in church. Told one of the brothers, I said, there's people going to drive up and down here and see this parking lot full of cars all week, and they're going to think, there's a bunch of nuts in there. Amen. Amen. And that's what we ought to be. Somebody said, Brother Spurgeon, are you a fanatic? I said, no, but that's my goal. <laughs> I hope to be. I hope to be someday. I'm working on it. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles tonight to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Amen. My daughter and son-in-law and granddaughter moved here from Denver a couple months ago. That made them a thousand miles closer amen, to mom and me when we're home in Ohio. And uh, so we get to see them more. We thank God for that. And there's a lot of churches in this country, but we're thankful that they're uh, under the pastoring of uh, my friend, Brother Bob Nagalski. Amen. Amen. Uh, it says this, Matthew chapter 16, uh, it, it, let's start in verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He had asked him in verse 15, Whom say ye that I am? And he said, Thou art. Christ. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In verse, uh, in verse 18, the Lord said, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, 
and upon this rock, and he wasn't talking about Peter, uh, I will build my church. Amen. And it said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He doesn't say they're not trying. And <laughs> we know that. Amen. I tell you what, if you're living in a bubble, amen, uh, it's going to get popped. The gates of hell would love to prevail against the church of God. But Jesus said, I will build my church. And, and, and I'm not a scholar uh, by any means. I just uh, have no better sense tonight than to believe that that book says what it means. And that book says that the church belongs to him. And says he founded it. Amen. He said, upon this rock, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, he's talking about himself. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And that ought to make it important right there because of who founded it. Now go over to uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Christ founded it. We'll jump in in verse 25. Husbands, loved your, love your wives uh, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, all the women should say amen right there just because that was read in church tonight. It's good advice. But it says this, it says uh, Christ loved the church. In Matthew 16, we see who founded it, amen. But here it says that he loved it and goes on to say uh, and gave himself for it. And, uh, I'll tell you what, the hard way, amen. He gave himself for it on the cross of Calvary uh, tonight. And uh, for him to die for it means for him to love it enough to die for him just makes it that much more special. And it ought to be that much more important to us. First Thessalonians chapter 4 says he's coming back for it. And I think for the Lord to come back to a place that uh, uh, come back to a place uh, that treated him so badly, uh, there must be something here he loves very, very much. Amen. And the passage says what it is. It's the church. It goes on to say in verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, uh, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. I want to brag on the church uh, tonight for a few minutes. I want to preach on, on that thought right there, a glorious church. Father, we do love you and come to you once again in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for what we've heard. I thank you for the songs that have been sung. I thank you for the sweet spirit of God. And Father God, the last thing I'd ever want to do is quench it, Lord God, or grieve it. I thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege and opportunity to open your Bible and preach to believers. I pray and ask, Lord, you be pleased with all that's said and done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I just uh, thank God for the church tonight. I, I got a chance to talk to Brother Frederick for a few minutes uh, before we met uh, in, in 1993 in Mexico on a mission trip. I had to get special permission from a federal judge to, to leave the United States. I used to have to get permission uh, from a federal judge to leave the Southern District of Ohio. And they said it can't be done, but Pastor Etep said pray, and the judge gave permission, amen. And I went down there, and uh, that was uh, 13, 14 years ago, and I just want to say that I am uh, fully persuaded uh, tonight uh, that the only reason I'm anywhere uh, still near uh, the will of God, uh, let alone in the ministry tonight, is because of a good little church on the backside of Dayton, Ohio, where I, with a pastor that loved me enough uh, to look me in the eye and tell me the truth, whether it was popular with me or not, and it wasn't always. I, I've been to the office. Amen. I mean, uh, from high school for about 20 years, uh, nobody got in my face very successfully, and then the Lord gave me Dr. E. Depp, and he got away with it a few times, and thank God I listened to him. Thank God I put me in a place uh, with some men and ladies that believe this book, amen, and encouraged me, thank God, uh, tonight for a little church. Thank God tonight uh, for a church that the Lord founded and loved and gave himself for. And I just want to say that ought to make it important to us. And I just want to go on record tonight as saying it's real important uh, to me tonight. Thank God uh, for the church. I, 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 before I get accused of preaching the whole counsel of God in one message, 
Amen, Brother Mark. Uh, I better get started. Let me say, uh, turn your Bibles to Revelation uh, 1. Revelation uh, chapter 1. And uh, give me, let me give you a few things. And, and I thought to myself, as, uh, as I found out minutes ago uh, that I was preaching tonight, you know, I came in like some of the rest of you. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. If uh, I don't need to preach, I just came and I, man, I've had a message in my hand and waiting and well, yeah, it's the way it is. If you're a preacher, you want to preach. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I just found out and then the spirit of God moving in the enlighteners, getting those books and, and the singing. And I said, man, there's some things uh, I'm glad I don't have in my Bible right now to grieve the spirit of God in here. I'm glad. Hey, we're just going to brag on the church for a few minutes. Yeah. Verse 5, Revelation 1 and verse 5. Amen. And it says this, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Well, that's a resume right there. Ain't nobody else got. Woo! Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins. We know that, don't we? But it says, uh, with his own, in his own blood. Amen. Uh, I'm happy to report tonight, amen, uh, that the glorious church tonight is a blood-washed church. Yeah. There's a blood-washed uh, church. Uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, and verse 18 says this, uh, For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, uh, but with the precious blood of Christ uh, as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot. I thank God tonight uh, for being uh, a part of a, a glorious blood wash a church. There's, there's places all over, all over this county, let alone all over the country. Uh, some, of them, some of them pretend to be churches. Some of them even it still says a church on the sign. I was by a place uh, uh, the other night and looking for this clubhouse, and it, it said something like, Kingdom Fellowship Life Center, something like that. I'm, I, it took me a while to figure out that they were trying uh, to pretend they were a church, but uh, whatever they do in there, let me tell you something. Uh, there are places all over this country. Uh, they're not uh, glorious to God because they got rid of that blood. They've taken that blood out. Uh, thank God tonight a glorious church uh, is a blood washed church. Amen. Yes. Hey, open that hymnal, man. Listen uh, and look at what we sing about. Saved by the blood. Uh, there's a fountain filled with blood. Uh, my hope is in the blood. Uh, I like tonight that it's the blood that he sees when he looks at me. Amen. You get looking at those songs. Uh, we're in church every week. I'll tell you invariably. Amen. Uh, one of the, during one of the congregational singing during the week, uh, we're going to sing one of them songs about the blood. Thank God for the blood. Amen. I got to thinking, I mean, it's a crying shame that uh, people that profess to be Christians have, have got it out of their songbooks uh, and got it out of their Bibles uh, and don't believe it. Uh, amen. But then I start thinking about all these other religious folks uh, we got on this planet. What in the world, Brother Mark? What in the world do Muslims sing about? Do they even have a hymn? No, I should have Abby call around. She'll find out for me. What do Hindus sing about? Yeah. Now, Buddhists, they hum. Um, what up? Put me to sleep, man. I got it, though. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what they sing about. Nothing. They ain't got nothing to sing about. That book said that Jesus washed us from our sins in his own blood. That book says that the church is important to him. And I'm telling you tonight, a glorious church is a blood-washed church. Amen. Amen. Let me check the time. Oh, man, i got to hurry up already. Amen. All right, now let's go in your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And while I'm walking and thinking and trying to figure out what I'm going to leave out to make the time, amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh, 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 while you're going there, let me tell you this. When I was a lost man, when I was a lost man, uh, I, I'm from Tennessee, you can tell by my accent. And, uh, and uh, I was in northern Alabama on my Harley, and a uh, van went by, and... Uh, and uh, it's, I remember what it said. I don't remember why I, I would take note of this, but it said, it said, Glory Land Baptist Church. 
Amen. And it said this. It said a Bible believing church. And I remember thinking in my lost condition way out there, I remember thinking, boy, that is stupid. All churches are Bible believing churches. Boy, did I get a rude awakening when I got saved. Amen. And I'll tell you something tonight, a glorious church to God is a Bible-believing church. Uh, verse 16 in the chapter you went to says this, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We live in a world that's consumed with making a profit. Right there it looks like the secret uh, uh, amen formula. Right there, it's right here in this book. Now listen, I'm not going to give you anything tonight you ain't heard before, God forbid. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what, I thank God tonight for pastor and some preachers during the course of the years, camp meetings and revivals that, that put stuff where I could get it. I thank God uh, there's been some that when they were done preaching, I didn't really know what they said or understood, but I was highly impressed with how smart they were. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm going to tell you honestly, the people that, that, uh, that I remembered and loved the most are the ones that gave me something that helped me that I could use. And somebody said this, and you've heard it. I don't claim to be original, amen, but it, that book says all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable, uh, amen. I got to look at my notes. You're making me nervous. Got to put my glass back on. Profitable for doctrine. Doctrine, okay, what's that? Doctrine, it, it was put to me like this. Doctrine is the road you're on right now. You, right now. That book is profitable for every dispensation for the correct road that group should have been on, should be on. We're saved by grace, hallelujah. And you'll find in that book the doctrine that applies to you and I right now. Book says, study to show thyself proven unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word, word of truth. And that book says that it's profitable for doctrine. And, and it was put to me like this. Doctrine is the road you're on, road I'm on, road we're supposed to be on. Amen. I said, okay, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Uh, say on, no preacher. And then it says this. It says profitable for reproof. Reproof. Amen? And uh, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, uh, preach the word, be in and in season, out of season. Uh, reprove, uh, rebuke with uh, an exhort. I almost forgot that one, like, like Brother Step often did. Uh, and exhort with all long suffering and, and, and doctrine. Again. But look here, look here. Uh, reproof, you know what that is? That's a warning. That's a warning. You're getting off the road. And that's what preaching is. Preaching will tell you, amen, preaching that book, i tell you where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. And it'll warn you when you're getting off track. Thank God. Hallelujah for that. And then it says for correction and correction, uh, correction, that's how to get back on the right road. Uh, God forbid we uh, cut them open and don't sew them up. Amen. I thank God uh, that book's profitable for all that. And then it said for instruction in righteousness. And that's very simply, that's what you want to heed because that's how to stay on the right road. I know that's simple, uh, but I'm glad somebody gave it to me in a way I could remember it. Uh, let me put it to you like this, maybe. It made an impression on me that when Pastor Tom Gresham uh, came down uh, to the Montgomery County Jail uh, 15 years ago and uh, preached, uh, uh, preached that blessed book, uh, and I got saved, and when he came back and visited me, it made an impression on me that when I asked him a question, he didn't tell me what they thought down at the church. He never gave me his opinion. He just opened that book and said, let's See what the Bible says. See, that gave me a confidence uh, that I wasn't going to get conned, uh, that I wasn't going to get flim-flam by some religious guy. I was willing to believe the book was right. He just opened the book. He's the pastor of our church now. You ask him a question, you know what he'll do? He'll say, let's see what the Bible says. As a young Christian, after I got out of jail, as a young Christian, uh, it mattered to me that Brother Easter preached that book, that he taught that book, that he counseled according to that book. 
I thank God tonight. I, that book says uh, that the, uh, of the church that Christ is going to present it to himself, a glorious church. And I'm going to tell you what it can't be, a glorious church. If you throw out that book right there, I believe that with all my heart. Glorious church is a blood-washed church, and, and it's a Bible-believing church. I believe, uh, I believe it's possible uh, I believe it ought to be uh, a glorious church. It ought to be a Baptist church. Amen. I got to be careful, amen, uh, because uh, if I start talking about all them other crowds, I can, get a, I can get an amen out of some of you that are still backslid. I don't want an amen out of a backslid Baptist. I have to be careful, amen, just about bragging on the Baptist church. But I'd say this, it ought to be. It ought to be. Uh, somebody said, what would you be if you weren't a Baptist? And rightly said, the answer is ashamed of yourself. Amen. I went into a, uh, I went into a uh, store. I had my bus being worked on. Amen. Uh, years ago, before it burned up. Amen. Uh, God took care of that, didn't he? And, uh, and uh, it was there. It's got scripture all over it. And, uh, and uh, a fellow that worked in there is a Christian, and he'd seen it and didn't know what it belonged to. Here I come in, and... Uh, and uh, I had a T-shirt on that said Soldier for Christ on it, and, uh, and my sleeves rolled up and everything. I didn't look like an evangelist, especially. Uh, but uh, but uh, the guy said, does that bus belong to you? <laughs> and I said, yeah. <laughs> and he said this, he said, what are you? <laughs> yeah, I did. I said, I'm an evangelist. And he said, non-denominational? I said, absolutely not. I'm an independent Baptist. And then he said this, do you accept love offerings? <laughs> he was testing me. He could have either said that or a hamburger, either one. That's how you test a Baptist. He reached in his pocket and pulled out $40. Well, I guess because I wasn't ashamed to admit I was a Baptist. Amen. And he gave me that money. And... Uh, and I went on. I'm thanking the Lord. I'm on back in the store. And he, here I see him walking around. He's looking. And he come up and gave me 60 more dollars. He said, my wife wants in on this. I guess he was just amazed that somebody was not ashamed to be a Baptist. I'm going to tell you what, it's a crying shame some of the places yeah. we go because of the way my wife and my daughters dress. People will say, oh, uh, yeah, obviously you're Christians. And they'll go, yeah. And they'll say, what are you? And they'll say, uh, we're independent Baptists. And people go, wow, I thought you was Pentecostal. I thought you was holiness or something by the way you dress. That's a sad testimony for the independent Baptists in this age. And I'm glad to be a Baptist. I believe a Baptist church is your best shot of hearing that gospel clear and plain. I still believe that. Amen. And I wouldn't want to be anything else. But I tell you what, traveling around, amen, I've seen, uh, I've seen independent Baptists getting pretty liberal in some areas. I hate to quench the spirit, but I'm an evangelist and I don't hate to quench the spirit. It's what I do. Amen. I tell you what, I go around these days, I hear very little about modest apparel anymore. I mean, that's what we heard every meeting, every, every camp meeting. We had Brother Green and others coming in and telling us how to live holy. Well, now we go places and, and we're buying into the world's philosophy that it doesn't matter. And it seems like holiness is still in my Bible. Yeah. Amen. You hear very, very little about, about separation uh, anymore. I, I was talking, about somebody, talking to somebody one time about some things, and they said, Brother Spurgeon, you sound like a legalist. And I thought about, you know, don't confuse me with long words, okay? Uh, I thought about it for a minute. I was an outlaw for 15 years. I looked at the guy and I said, what are you, an illegalist? <laughs> you know, I was a rebel all them years. I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. Amen, that didn't offend me. It don't bother me. I've been called worse, amen. Yeah. I just believe his ways are higher. We're supposed to try to attain to his ways. We just write it off. Well, we're just, uh, he knows our flesh and, and, you know, dust. That's what it says. We're just dust. Yeah, but you're not supposed to be satisfied with that. We're supposed to be working toward being conformed to the image of his son. Amen. Amen. That this world might see something different. But I'll tell you what, I go around and I preach our crowd. But I'm not hearing stuff like that much anymore. Amen. I see churches, our churches, losing control of their music. 
I heard a preacher say once, you lose control of the music, you'll never get it back. You lose control of your music, guess who's got control of it? Amen. Amen. I believe this stuff. I tell you what, I, I don't hear much preaching against television anymore. I used to hear it all the time. You used to hear it all the time. I heard it enough that I started asking God about it and I got, well, got rid of mine. Now, you do what you want, but uh, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I, I cringe when I hear people stand up and give testimony or, or, or even worse, Preachers stand behind the pulpit and use the illustrations that got off the History Channel. What are you telling your people? What a thing. I tell you what I'm preaching about. I'm glad to be a part of uh, tonight a glorious church. And I'm glad I'm a Baptist. But I'm telling you what. Uh, there's things that we used to say 15 years ago. We used to say about other denominations that we're doing now. Here's one of them. Here's one of them. I tell you what, every time a message was preached, uh, every time, amen, a spirit of God moved in a church, uh, people made their way to an old-fashioned altar. I, I appreciate hearing it mentioned this week. I appreciate hearing a Brother Charlie talk about it. I appreciate a Brother Bob still trying to encourage people uh, to make their way uh, down to do business at an old-fashioned altar. I believe in that, but I'm going to tell you what, uh, when I got saved, we talk about uh, them other crowds, uh, them other crowds, they don't even have invitations, uh, they put in their bulletin, three weeks from Sunday, we're going to have an invitation, think what a crazy thing, when the Spirit of God moves, that's what he's doing, he's giving you an invitation uh, to get serious with God. <coughs> but we don't go to that all the way we used to. I've been in churches where somebody apologized to my wife one time after they said, oh, I hope your husband doesn't think uh, we're not listening or not receptive. But we just don't go to the altar down around here much. We just don't do, I'm thinking, man, people are robbing themselves. Yes, sir. Amen. Some of the sweetest times I've ever had as a Christian have been just just to the, to the right of the pulpit at Charity Baptist Church. I'm talking about going back to 1991 when I was on a federal bond on my way to penitentiary. Uh, uh, on my face, uh, uh, next to the pulpit, knowing I was going to prison, uh, not surrendering to preach, not surrendering to do anything, just surrendering to God my life. Yeah, yeah. I had people say, oh, I've surrendered, to the, I've surrendered to that. Why don't you just surrender to God? Let God pick what he wants to do with you. That worked with me. Amen. I never dreamed I'd be doing this. Amen. But I'm going to tell you where we, I'm going to tell you where we uh, sealed this thing, signed it over to God, right at an old vagin altar. Yes, sir. I remember uh, some sweet times I've been uh, uh, next to that pulpit, uh, uh, praying to God, uh, thanking Him for His goodness, Amen. begging Him for direction. I'll tell you more importantly, ask Him to forgive me for being carnal and stupid. Yeah. And sinning. I'm going to tell you what. People say, 1 John 1, 9 ain't for us. I'm going to tell you how I know it is. Because I've done it and God done something right there. That's all proof I need. It's like that Bible. How do you know the King James Bible? Can you prove the King James Bible is the Word of God? Sure. Sure I can. I don't know any Hebrew. Don't know any Greeks. One owed me money once. I got it though. I got it from him. I don't want to know that stuff. I'm going to tell you why I know the book's right. Because I did what it said. Amen. And it worked. That's all I need, man. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. You know why I know confessing your sin works? Because I've done it. Yeah. And the peace came back. That book says, let the peace of God uh, rule in your heart. And I've lost it. And I've got it back at, at an old-fashioned altar. Yeah. And I say, hey, I thank God tonight uh, that we probably use it more than anybody else. But we're losing it. Who do you think's behind that, you reckon? Who do you think it is that'd like for you to sit in your seat after the Spirit of God moves in a service? Yeah. Who do you think it is uh, when God has put his finger right on something you've been dealing with, who do you think it is that's saying, you know, you can take care of this right here. You can, you can, you can, uh, you can deal with this later. That one that cometh immediately and stealeth the seed, that's the one. That's one. Uh, uh, you counter that by coming immediately yourself. Amen. Glorious church tonight. He's going to present it to himself. I'm glad to be part of it, man. I'm glad I'm going to be in it. 
Amen. A glorious church, blood. Hey, thank God there's only one way to get in this thing because if there'd have been two choices, uh, based on my previous history, I'd have made a wrong choice. I made so many wrong choices. I thank God tonight. I made one so right. It washed away all my sin. Amen. 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 And I thank God. Uh, I thank God for the book. And I thank God for a little independent Baptist church. Man, I thank God that for the glorious church. Let me tell you something else about it. Tell you something else about it tonight. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. The Bible says this. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Last of all tonight, Glorious Church is a burden-bearing church. Well, I tell you what, I've only been saved about five years maybe six, my Bible teacher and possibly the greatest man of God I ever knew, Dr. Michael Hanstein, my man, was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease. I'm going to tell you what, that was one of the most unbelievable things our little church ever went through. But as a young Christian, not knowing much, not an evangelist, amen, called to preach, go to the jails, things like that, I watched a little church come together and rally around a family. Amen. And bear one another's burdens, scripturally, biblically. That book says, A new commandment I've given you, they love one another even, even as I have loved you. Amen. Uh, 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 and then it said, By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. Amen. John 13. Uh, Charity Baptist Church rallied, rallied around the Hanstein family, bore that burden. I, 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 I remember, I, I hear the stories of things that I didn't witness myself. Uh, how Miss Sue, uh, she, uh, she would be at the VA all night because of a fouled up procedure and Brother Mike almost dying. Come home after being up 24 hours or longer, uh, ministering to her husband and, and come home wore out, wrung out, uh, uh, the devil uh, right there. Come home and the ladies from charity were in the front yard uh, planting flowers. Just come over there, uh, take care of the lawn, paint, fix, repair. Men from the church inside, keeping things up. Family from our church, uh, uh, family from our church took the burden of homeschooling. A couple of the kids. What a thing, man. It's hard enough with your own kids. <coughs> 75 meals. When it got real bad, 75 meals consistently. Take into the house. Take care of the family. Her 80-some-year-old her mother drove down and helped watch the kids. Well, I tell you what, I saw the epitome of a burden. Bear. That's how it's supposed to work. Put a calendar up, Brother Mark, you remember? At the back of the auditorium, there was a calendar about that big, and there was little stickers on it. And, and, and every, we were requested to fast for that family. And for 18 months, somebody from our church was fasting for that. You go take it. I got this day. This day's covered. You get a different one. And, and I watched it work the way it's supposed to work. And even the man that saved Brother Mike's life in Vietnam after he was shot and, and, and spent all them years in a wheelchair, uh, they found that guy and got him up to Dayton. And he came in and he witnessed how much we loved Brother Mike and his family because we loved him that much. He'd never seen anything like an old lost Catholic boy. He got saved. Amen. Daughter got saved. Amen. Let me tell you something that's glorious to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. We live in a, we live in a day and age where the battle cry of the flesh is me first, and I'm sorry to report that that's too common amongst us. But a glorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a burden-bearing church. I'll tell you what, I'm glad to have something to do with it. There ain't no place I'd rather be. There ain't nothing I'd rather be doing. I just want to uh, have part of this glorious church tonight. Aren't you glad you're saved tonight? Aren't you glad you're in church on a Tuesday night? Aren't you glad uh, that you overcome? You're concerned about whatever your friends or family or anybody driving by might think and just came down here to meet in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He founded it. He gave himself for it. Coming back for it. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot. We ain't there yet. Or wrinkle. We ain't there yet. Or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. That's going to be glorious, isn't it? Amen. I never met anybody yet uh, that would look you in the eye and tell you honestly that they're holy enough. I know I'm not. If I've got any disappointments in my Christian life, you're looking at it. Somebody had told me 15 years ago that I wouldn't be any more spiritual than I am right now after being a faithful member for 15 years. Same church. Being a full-time evangelism, nine years. Somebody would have told me that this date in 2006, I wouldn't be any more spiritual than I am. I'd have probably took them outside and whooped them. If they were bigger than me, I'd have got Brother McGahee on them. <laughs> that is funny, isn't it? Amen. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what. One day, holy, yes. without blemish, glorious church tonight. Amen. Father, we love you and come to you in your precious name once again. Thank you, Father, for caring about us. Thank you for being mindful of us. Thank you for sending your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we may get our sins forgiven.